Hello, Time to Chat listeners. This week, we will be continuing our series of eight things to do with your child during these summer months. We will be talking about children between the ages of seven and nine years old today. One of my nieces is seven years old, and much like me at that age, one of her favorite phrases is, I'm bored. She's always curious, full of energy, and needs to be kept busy, or else she gets an itch to cause trouble, which is also a lot like me at that age. Children at this age will do just about anything with you as long as they get to have that interaction and some quality time with you. My advice would be, don't underestimate their abilities and willingness to help or to try new things. Engage their minds and their bodies and marvel at the things they can accomplish. Here is my list of summer activities for you and your seven to nine year old. Hi, I'm Tanya Friend, and I've been a speech and language pathologist for 13 years. I am also the owner and director of Chatterbox Speech Therapy, a speech therapy practice that serves the children and community in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I'm Corey Walker. I've been working with children for nearly 20 years, and I was a pioneering app developer in the area of speech and language pathology. We all have gifts in this life, and mine is knowing what makes children tick. Parenting in the modern age comes with uncharted challenges. We'll be bringing you discussions with experts in childhood development and introducing some tough questions and topics. Together with our experience and knowledge, we have created this podcast to help you with your child's development and wellness. So listen up. Because it's time to chat. Okay, let's get started. I have some exciting things to share with you in this episode. Number one, plan a meal and cook it together. Start to finish. Decide what you're going to make. Make a grocery list. Talk about the prices and budget for your ingredients. Go to the store together. Talk about the different sections or departments of the grocery store and how the food is organized. Let them read the recipe with your help if needed. You'll measure the ingredients. Taste the ingredients as you go as you're cooking, talk about the different flavors and textures. This activity truly involves all areas of development and education. It incorporates language and literacy and math and science. It's a great activity to do with your child. And at the end, you have the reward of sitting down and sharing a meal together. Number two, let them help you with a project. Whether it's organizing a closet or doing some yard work, your children love to help and will experience a sense of accomplishment with you. Okay, number three, take a pretend trip together. This one is really special to me and it's a little bit unique. So about a year ago, my oldest niece, who was nine years old at the time, started to study world history and learn geography and she began to really show an interest in traveling especially to paris france she wanted to learn all about paris and talk about all the things that you would do there and places you would visit there and of course that is one of the places on my list a dream place that i would like to visit so we would sit and chat about it and look up different places and talk about what we would do if we went to paris together and so one day i just got an idea and i looked at her and i said well let's go to paris And she gave me a puzzled look and was like, how in the world are we going to do that, Auntie? And I said, you know, we're going to pretend. And she still quite didn't understand what I had brewing. And to be honest with you, I didn't either. But I knew I could make it happen. So what I did was I picked out some things that you would do if you were to visit Paris, France as a tourist. And I recreated them the best that I could here. So we went to an art museum. We went to the farmer's market. We went antique shopping, we went shopping to some upscale stores, and then we went to a restaurant that served French cuisine. And the entire day, we just pretended that we were in France. We listened to French music in the car, we learned different words in French, different phrases, and truly just had a blast with this. We used our imagination. At the end of the night, we had, we made our own dinner, we made ratatouille, and we sat in front of a, I ordered like a big poster of the Eiffel Tower and we just pretended away, listened to more French music and it was so much fun. And since then, I have taken my second niece on a trip to Mexico. 
did the same thing, just did some planning and did some basic things around the city that were similar to things that you would do visiting these countries. So this is a lot of fun. I am going to put up a blog post on the Time to Chat website. So if you want to learn more about this or see what kinds of things that I did and created to make this super special, just take a look. It's really a fun thing to do and not just for your child, but for you too. It's a great way to dream and to just let your imagination go wild. Number four, create a treasure box. Summer is a great time to do this, especially at the end of the summer. So what you do is you sit down with your child and you talk about things that are really special to them, things that hold a special meaning to them. And you can walk around their room or you can just ask them what things are special to them. It might be a stuffed animal. It might be a piece of jewelry. It might be a picture, a book, a bookmark, um, anything that your child has collected, little souvenirs from trips, anything like that, something that holds a special meaning to your child. And you can either purchase a little box or you can find one around the house and decorate it with stickers. And you have your child add all of these things into the box, things that have this special meaning to them. And while you're doing this, you ask them questions about why they made these choices and encourage them to make independent choices for their treasures. This activity helps to build individuality. It instills a sense of value and it engages them in informative language. It's a great activity and it's a great way to get to know your child and the things that really are special to them. Number five, plant a plant together. This is a special activity because it will give you and your child something to care for together and it gives them a responsibility. They will watch it grow and experience feelings of confidence and pride. Number six, go on a bike ride together. Children at this age need and love exercise. It is important to talk about safety and the rules of the road for bicyclists before you head out, which is great conversation and vocabulary and learning rules and all of the things that are involved with, you know, being out on the roads and traffic. It's just, that's great language building and um, problem solving and attention activity for them. It, it's wonderful. This activity also engages their mind and body and it helps with coordination, balance, and awareness. Number seven, write a story together. What a great way to engage the imagination. Develop and express complex thoughts and ideas and work on sequencing and learning parts of a story. And when you're done, you can add it to their treasure box, something they will love to go back and read years later. Number eight, meditate together. Whether meditation is something that you are familiar with or something that is new to you, it is a great activity to teach and share with your child. Recently, there is a significant amount of medical research and evidence showing that meditation can have a positive and healing effect on our bodies, as well as our minds. Teaching your children to quiet their minds is a powerful tool and one they will benefit from years to come. There are several apps that provide guided meditation for children. You can also find guided meditations on YouTube and Spotify. Meditating before bedtime is helpful or first thing in the morning. It'll either help you get a kickstart on your day or it'll help you and your child relax and calm your minds and bodies at the end of the day. You can also incorporate some essential oils into this. We will be doing a podcast and I will add into the blog some ideas for meditation and even some apps or some websites or YouTube channels that you can find some good tools for this. That is all that I have for you guys today. And I just want to say thank you for listening. And I really hope that you guys are enjoying this series and trying some of these things at home with your child. We will be wrapping up these series in the next two episodes. So stay tuned and have a wonderful week.